Good morning to you all. Uh, uh, you are all gladly welcomed in this uh, webinar of, uh, of ATLAS, um, the Association for Tourism and Leisure Education and Research. And as you all know, yeah, uh, among the objectives of ATLAS, uh, we are promoting the teaching of tourism, leisure, and all kinds of other subjects. And we also uh, are aiming to promote the links between all kinds of professional bodies in tourism, leisure, and hospitality, and also connect with uh, the, the, uh, the application of theory, so in a practical context. And that's why today we are very glad that uh, one of the special interest groups of ATLAS, the, the special interest group on circular economy, is organizing this webinar today, which is really practical and focused on uh, a real life case from the industry, um, which gives us an excellent opportunity to bridge uh, theory and practice and have additional discussion uh, between academia and, and industry. So today we will uh, be focusing on uh, a, a practical case from uh, the Garden Hotels in Mallorca, who uh, did a really successful job in uh, the transition towards sustainability in hospitality. And um, yeah, I'm very looking forward to the, the presenter of Garden Hotels in Mallorca, but may I first give the floor to uh, our delegate from our special interest group on circular economy, um, uh, Ms. Lucia Tomassini. So Lucia, please go ahead and introduce the speaker and uh, the further program of uh, this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Corne, and thank you very much for the, for the opening and welcoming, and also from my side on behalf also of my colleague that is here with us, Professor Elena Cavagnaro, we are both I'd say the co-founder and co-coordinator of this special interest group on circular economy and uh, that was established a bit more than one year ago. So we are to say at the beginning of all the thing that all the things that we would like to do. And this is why today we are very proud to have as guest, as a guest lecturer, uh, Mrs. Erika Garcia Nunez from Garden Hotel. She will guide us through their process, who they are, I mean, which, uh, their hotel, their vision, their mission, and also how they embrace the transition since they are really front runner. So as uh, Cornet was saying, we see this as the beginning of a series of webinar where you, we can have case given and we can try to put together, I mean, uh, scholars, industry representative, and hopefully students to think along around this topic and sharing best practices information. So I conclude this presentation before giving the floor to Erica. Um, just, I mean, we see this is an invite to our to the audience uh, that is following us on the YouTube streaming. Uh, we see this as an inspiring session. So there will be first uh, around 20, 25 minutes of presentation. Then we will be happy to engage in a discussion, question, answer, comments. So feel free to, um, to react um, or to, to put your question in the chat of YouTube. And me and our colleagues here, we can take care of that and then coming back to you. Uh, I think exactly I, I mentioned, I said everything, the thing that I had in mind for this opening from my side. So we are happy to give the floor uh, to you, Erika. Good morning. Thank you very much, Lucia. Thank you so much for this opportunity to be here today sharing our experience in uh, the sustainable management of the tourism activity. Thank you to Atlas for inviting me, for inviting Garden Hotels. So also congratulations for all these efforts that you are doing and this first year of this uh, specialist uh, interest group. So let's start with my presentation. I'm going to uh, share my screen. Okay, I think you can see uh, my full screen. And I would like to start presenting the company for those that you, that you don't know us. Uh, we are a 100% family owned uh, company. Um, we have uh, 12 hotels. Most of them are in Balearic Islands. So we have eight in Mallorca, one in Menorca, one Ibiza and one mainland Spain. 
uh, Huelva and also one in pipeline in Dominican Republic. We have more than 30 years of experience in the hospitality sector and the core of our business are the beach destinations. Um, from our beginnings in the 80s, we established solid values with a strong feeling for Mallorca's agriculture tradition. And also nowadays we are leading circular economy. But why can I say that we are leading circular economy? Because um, we have put the will at the service of the constructive intelligence, which means friendly maintaining a continuous effort towards our goals, which means ability to make things. And this is what I want to share with you, all these things that we are doing and pushing uh, the industry to move towards sustainability. Um, of course, this is our main goal, but how we move towards this goal, there are different ways. We decided to use the vehicle of circular economy to uh, move towards the different uh, aspects of sustainability. But we are not talking about a global theoretical circular economy. We like to talk about local action circular economy, which means that um, we uh, act in the local community, so in our direct environment, and also we act uh, with actions, with examples, because sometimes uh, in the PowerPoint, circular economy is quite easy to understand, but so difficult to apply in, in, the, in the real life. And also global, because it could be like the whole earth, a big loop, but that's not the point. So what we really need to make this works is to have a small loops close to us, close to the hotels. So direct uh, regenerative impact in the local community. And of course, if you are worried, you have to take care. So that's what we are doing and, one, and why we talk about this local action circular economy. But this, you don't have to believe it because I said, we can, uh, you can believe it because we were in 2021, the first hotel chain in Europe to be certified in circular economy strategy by AENOR. AENOR is the Spanish Association for uh, Standardization and Certification. So they create this standard of uh, circular economy strategy for any company, for any company of the industry of, or, or other sectors. And we were the, fir the first hotel chain to, to, to have uh, this certification. This implied to have clear objectives to monitor and audit them uh, every year. And we want to offer transparency and truthfulness to all our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. But this, uh, the main issue is that this involves the whole company. So the um, corporate decisions should follow the principles of circular economy. Of course, this involves the whole, all the hotels that we have under the brand uh, Garden Hotels. Here we have some of the criteria that we follow to uh, established this strategy to uh, three years ago. But the important things are that we have trained uh, all our employees in terms of circularity to be able to uh, take decisions uh, following the principles of circular economy. And also it this uh, involved the ownerships and the, the management. So it comes from above from the top to down and everyone should be aware about uh, circular economy and how to take decision following its principles. And here we go for the action. So how all this begin? Not in, tw not in 2021, quite uh, some years before. As I said, we are a family owned company. So we have already the third generation working with us. And this implied this uh, feeling um, of uh, connection with the environment and the local community. And also this uh, long-term vision. So thinking about uh, 
what I'm li uh, living for the next ones, for the next generation. So already in the 80s and the 90s, when we were funding, um, we were trying to connect directly with local producers. But at that moment, it was not possible because the agriculture sector here in Mallorca and Balearic Islas was not uh, very developed. So it was very basic, no infrastructure to uh, satisfy the demands of a, ho a hotel. So it was not possible. But after year the years, it was in 2014, when we were very committed uh, to try to have um, big commands of local products in our hotels. Just for you to have an idea, 95% of what we consume in Balearic Islands uh, provides from outside. I mean, could be mainland Spain, Europe, or the rest of the world. And in July and August, this uh, percentage increased until 99%. That means that it's quite important to support local economy because we depend a lot from outside. So we want to increase at that moment our um, um, consume of local products, uh, food and beverage, and we contact directly with local producers. So we start having meetings with cooperatives directly with local producers, uh, small ones, bigger ones, and try to make um, fair agreements for them and for us and start to make in this uh, truthfulness uh, relationship win-win uh, to work with them and offer top quality products to our clients and also the best for our environment. Also, we were supporting organic farming because we think they are the best products also for clients and for planet. And nowadays we can say that we are offering uh, more than 95 tons of Balearic products every season in our hotels, restaurants and buffets. So almost 10 years or 10 years already of these relationships that every year we have increased the amount of uh, zero kilometer uh, products, regional products that we are offering. And also we were creating a, a corner in our hotel, in our uh, restaurant, uh, where we were offering exclusively organic and mostly locally sourced products to give value of these products and to also to the clients so they can enjoy this exclusively corner with organic products and give value to all these efforts. So after that, uh, in 2015, we have another example of this commitment. When three farmers come to us to present an idea, uh, they were uh, producing organic lamb, but at that moment, uh, that product has no uh, so much um, value at the market. It was difficult to sell it. And also because it was locally and organically produced and the price was quite high and not everyone was able to give value to what that means. So they uh, proposed to be one of their clients. And we said, yes, of course, we want to buy your product. At that moment, we were buying lamp at New Zealand, so quite far away. And we were very committed with that idea. But the point was that it was only an idea. They have no infrastructure, no facilities, no distribution service. So they need help. So we decided to, okay, let's do something. Let's help them. So we make a business plan for them. Uh, we also organize uh, an event, a big event in one of our hotels. Uh, we invite uh, other hoteliers, uh, important chefs here in the um, islands, uh, people from public administration. So, and we make a, a big tasting menu. So trying to... Um, find clients for this uh, new company. Um, so the event was very success, but at the end, no one decided to buy the product. So the business plan says that they should sell minimum 150 kilos per week of the product uh, at a certain price in order to make it viable. So they have no clients and we decided again to do something. So we were buying uh, the whole amount, this minimum amount that they need to start. So that uh, implies that uh, implied that we changed the 
menu of our buffets because at that moment we were not uh, offering that such amount of lamb. Our main client is uh, German people and they prefer uh, pork um, instead of lamb. So we should uh, think about new dishes and to offer all this amount. And also they were selling us the whole piece of lamb because they have no facilities to cut it. Usually the restaurants or hotels, they only buy the pieces that they want, but uh, so the ones that the clients like the most. But in our case, we should buy the whole piece, cut it in our kitchens, and uh, make new dishes with these parts that we are we are not so common that they are not so common to use, and uh, to offer them, uh, and then to distribute in our own refrigerated vans uh, the product to the rest of our hotels. So nowadays we can say that after almost ten years. We continue purchasing um, organic lamb from Mallorca, so locally. And um, we are offering uh, more than three tones every season. Last season, we were increasing until four tones of this product. And this year, we have already signed this uh, commitment of a minimum of four tones per season. And also, we are offering other 20 tones of other organic products in our hotel hotels. So we have now just one uh, uh, corner in one hotel um, with exclusively organic products. We have also now uh, more corners. So three hotels have uh, this uh, uh, corner with exclusively organic products, mostly locally. And also we create our um, children's buffet, also 100% uh, organic uh, for children to also enjoy these products. And uh, after this year, so these, far these three farmers are nowadays more than 40 families that are living from uh, this profitable company. So they are selling to other uh, restaurants and supermarkets, al although unfortunately we are still uh, being the only uh, hotel chain that buy uh, Mallorca and organic lamb. Other ideas I want to share with you, it's about compost production. This is sometimes uh, uh, strange because our main activity is not to uh, manage waste, but uh, we should do it to help uh, primary sector and also to keep increasing the amount of organic and local products that we were offering. So um, in 2016, after all these uh, agreements and meetings with local producers, we were... Um, uh, aware, we realized that the organic agriculture has a big problem with fertilizers. So in here in Mallorca, they have no, uh, we have no organic um, compost uh, locally produced, so we should buy it from outside and it's quite expensive. So every time we try to increase our amount of organic products, they all, always were saying, we have not enough organic compost to feed our soil and uh, satisfy your demands. And we say, okay, what we can do? And we realize we have the uh, solution at home. So every day in our hotels, we are producing big amounts of organic waste. Just for you to have an idea, a hotel of 2,000, sorry, 225 rooms, can produce between 600 and 700 kilos of organic waste per day. So this is a big amount. And we can use all these to make organic compost. So in 2016, we contract a master composter because we have no idea about how to do it. And we make a pilot test uh, to be sure that this can work. Uh, in collaboration with environmental and social organizations. So one of our hotels during one month was um, was managing their own organic waste. So we were mixing this uh, organic waste half-half with planning waste, also from uh, our hotels. And we were producing with this bio biological process, the compost. And at the end, we were producing uh, 20,000 kilos of this uh, compost. And uh, the analysis, this says that it was A class. So maximum category for compost, and it means suitable for organic farming. So we were very happy because we have 
a solution for uh, these organic farmings and also to increase amounts of organic products from uh, local origin. Uh, the problem was that at that moment, the waste law from Balearic Islands uh, didn't allow us to manage our own organic waste. This was only a pilot test uh, with certain conditions, and we remit a report to the uh, Balearic government. So we should wait until 2018 when the government of Balearic Islands start to work in a new law, in a new waste law. And we were participating in these work plans, trying to include this possibility to make compost and to manage our own organic waste in the law. So we receive uh, some uh, economical support from the government, uh, from the funds of the sustainable tourism tax that we have here in the region. Uh, to uh, push this circular economy project. And also we were uh, making an application for authorization as organic waste and biomass manager uh, and the corresponding composting plan. So see, this was four years of bureaucracy to have all these authorizations. And also we make an agreement with the biggest uh, organic farm in Mallorca that is called Sataulero. So in 2019, the, Bal the new Balearic Waste Law uh, enters into force and we consolidate the project. So we start to manage our own organic waste from one hotel uh, directly with our own composting plant in the organic farm Sataulero. And also we were upscaling the, this um, organic corner that we have in, in this first hotel with more products and also opening to other hotels. So I have a small video, 10 seconds, just for you to have an idea about what we are doing. Uh, but you have the full video in YouTube, in our channel, Garden Hotels, where you can see the whole process and how we this organic go, uh, waste goes from the hotel to the plant directly on the farm. It produces the bio biological process of composting. And then this compost go directly to the so soil. The, um, they plant uh, the um, food that it grows there. And then this uh, food come back to the hotel that we offer the best quality products to our clients. So let's see this 10 seconds video just for you to have more uh, um uh, reasons to go for the full video So I invite you to see the full one. And also I invite you to come to Mallorca to see our composting plant, of course. And more examples uh, about plastic, for example. We also were very aware about uh, this problem. So we are in the Mediterranean Sea, that is the most polluted uh, sea of the world. And uh, plastic is a big issue that we should also manage. So we decided in 2019 to change our single use amenities for uh, large format left refillable dispensers. What that means that we were all, uh, not only aware about plastic, also about the kind of product that we want to put in these big dispensers and also what we are gonna do, so how we are gonna manage these dispensers. So we were looking for um, a local provider of an organic product to offer to our clients. So this uh, shampoo and hell and all this stuff. But at that moment, it was no any a local provider that was doing this for hotels. So we should buy it outside again. So what we decide to do? Okay, let's look for um, a company, a small company, a family company that they are doing hair or shampoo, although they are not working for with hotels, but let's help them to do that. So we find uh, we found a, a small laboratory in Palma, in the uh, uh, main city of uh, Mallorca, 
and we were asking them to produce for us. At the beginning, they say, no, we are just working with the small supermarkets. Uh, we are not working with hotels. We are big demanding. Uh, 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 we are big you are big consumers and we cannot satisfy your demands. And we say, let's try, make a pilot test. Let's see, we, are, we want to help you. So we help them to find uh, these kind of dispensers that we need in our hotels. Um, and also we were making a pilot test to refill them and to use more than once these new dispensers. Uh, the products that they are producing here in Mallorca uh, are based, so the base of the, the main ingredient is uh, Mallorcan almond and the ingredients are also organic. So it was perfect because it, it's quite Alina, uh, quite um, following our values. So um, we make this test, it was quite successful, but then um, the sanitary um, uh, um, minister come to us and say, okay, you cannot do this because you cannot refill, in it, refill these dispensers in the hotels. You have to make it, should be the provider who should make directly this process. So we talk with them, and they decided to go for it because we make a purchase commitment. So we decided to buy, to change all the amenities of all our hotels. So they changed the infrastructure of their own laboratory to make this uh, process to clean the dispensers and refill them again. And we create this circular administration with them. So nowadays in all the hotels we have in Mallorca and Menorca, we have these uh, products, make it in, in locally and also from organic ingredients. And uh, we are making this circular process and we are using these dispensers between five and seven times each of them. Also about uh, the connection with our clients, we are trying to educate or uh, raise the awareness so raise the awareness that they have about sustainability. And um, all our entertainment program has this vision, but uh, especially the program from for families and from kids, we have a Boogie Nature a program that it's for the smallest ones and all the activities involves nature so every activity is helping to connect them with different elements of nature to discover it to love it to take care of it um, also with the families we this year are starting doing every month cleaning bit uh, activities in our hotels uh, also we have in the hotels organic gardens so that means we take out some uh, grass areas and we plant uh, organic gardens there so we are planting tomatoes eggplants different things um, and the kids uh, have activities in the organic garden so they go they watering them they collect the vegetables also they plant their own uh, stuff and they connect with nature we try always to uh, share our values with clients and make them uh, conscious of the uh, environment of where we of where they are. And also finishing with examples, I would like to share with you our commitment with local community and with the educational sector. Um, we were in 2021 uh, starting a project in collaboration with uh, two uh, vocational training centers here in the islands. So we were develop developing together a circular economy course. So um, to include circular economy content in the vocational training um, of, of that they are offering in the center. So nowadays this course is open for the whole community. So it's uh, very accessible, is online, and anyone can use it. Also, we are trying to educate future uh, generations, and we have um, agreements with these 
uh, vocational training centers in terms of um, contracting uh, these um, new generations that they already have all this information about how important it is to have circular economy skills because it's something that it's going to be needed in the tourism sectors and in any sector in the future. And here you have a bit of chronology about uh, also reporting. So we will have the first hotel certification uh, in environmental issues in 2001. So more than 20 years ago uh, with the European EMAS regulation. And after that, we still been reporting every year. Also, all our hotels have uh, environmental certification, at least one. one um, some of them, they have more than one. And also 2022, we were doing our non-financial information statement and also our carbon footprint registration. And since last year, we are doing monthly environmental reports trying to be very proactive to not just to wait, to, uh, to um, be aware. So every month about our impact, about what we are doing, to check what we can do better to achieve our goals. And here you have some data to support all this information. Uh, so for example, from the last three years, you can see some information about our composting project. Of uh, At 2021, we start managing the organic waste of one hotel. And nowadays we are managing the waste of uh, three of our hotels, the three that are closely to the composting plant. So we have increased more than 70% uh, the organic waste that we are managing. Uh, that implies that we are increasing the amount of com organic compost that we are producing and that is rather directly uh, feeding the soil of uh, Mallorca, of this organic agriculture. And also we are managing the pruning waste, not just from our hotels, also from other hotels in the areas. And we have not just one point, so one area where the hotels and also uh, public administration and uh, particulars can, um, private uh, companies can um, bring to us the planning waste. We have more than one point uh, in, in the area, in Mallorca. So what we are doing is shredding this planning waste uh, to to do to produce uh, compost, organic compost, and also other pro uh, products for the agriculture sector because it was so common to burn this pruning waste. And when you are burning all these uh, pruning waste, you are producing big amounts of emissions, not only CO2 emissions, also another ones. And this has a big impact. So when you, instead of burning all these planning waste, shredding them, we can avoid big amounts of uh, these emissions. Uh, it's around 97% of difference between burning and shredding. So also you have here that we are um, uh, avoiding uh, more than uh, 280 tons of uh, uh, kilos, sorry. Um, no, sorry, I say it correctly, Two, 220 tons, uh, 280 tons of um, CO2 emissions. And here we have some recognitions from the international uh, community. Um, of um, what we are doing, all these efforts. So all these awards that we have been receiving for uh, these years uh, about all these projects that I have been talking to you. So they, they, the society cares about it because it gives value to that. There are the recognition after all this. And just to finish um, some conclusions, some reflections. From Garden Hotels, we have very clear that the cost of not acting consciously is higher than the cost of continuing to act as before. Also, that means that all significant change involves overcoming resistance in the form of beliefs. And uh, the last term, I would like to make an invitation because we think that leading our own 
future depends on making an unprecedented effort today to drive significant change towards the regenerative transformation of tourism management. Shall we start together? Thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Erika. Thank you very much. It was really an interesting presentation. I'm sure I can speak on behalf of all the participants. Um, well, we have already a question in the chat. I invite the, the participants and I'm sure also maybe um, my colleague here or the, uh, or the panel here may have question for you. I have it too, but what the, my, my idea is to start from the question that was put in the chat. And the question comes from um, Alfonso Vargas Sanchez, who is asking you if you could summarize the requirement of this ENOR, INOR certification on circular economy strategy. And also is asking you, being you the first, as Garden Hotels, do you know if other tourist companies have been already awarded with this certification? So the certification implies, uh, first of all, to make uh, a big evaluation of uh, what we are doing, uh, taking in account the indicators of circular economy. And also implies to make a materiality analysis. What that means that we should ask to all our stakeholders in terms of circularity, what is the most important things for them? So what worry them? And also we do the same with us. And then we check, so we cross all this info and we check, so what is important for my clients, for my, provi for my providers, for uh, the local community, for public administration, so for society, for my employees, and also for um, management in the company. When we cross all this info, we realize where we have to put all our effort and these are our main lines. So uh, after all this analysis process, so we evaluate us with these circularity indicators, and then we uh, analyze so what is important for us and for our stakeholders. So where we should um, invest our efforts, we make our uh, objectives program and we um, set the actions that we should follow to um, uh, achieve these uh, goals. And we make a, a, a revision of this uh, program every year. And every three years, we make a big renovation of the certification. Also about the other part of the question, if there are other companies, hotel chains that they have the certification, yes. After us, uh, other hotel chains, they start to be certified. Uh, for example, uh, we have another hotel chain here in Balearic Island that they also have it. So yes, there are more that they are trying to uh, put all these efforts uh, in circular economy to move towards sustainability. Thank you, Erika, for your reply. Um, I open up example I'm, I'm, uh, to well to the what to the audience via the YouTube streaming. I mean, please, if you have any question or comments or feedback, feel free to use the chat. We are monitoring the chat, so we will react promptly. Or otherwise, I don't know. I give the floor also to my colleague Elena Cavagnaro. Do you have any question, Elena, for Erika or? Thank you, thank you, Lucia. Erika, first of all, thank you for this very clear, informative um, presentation and for being also so, as you were promising actually, to be so concrete in the example that you were giving. I, I really commend your um, uh, your efforts to close the loop locally right? and also to, to, to actually to, to um, spend so much effort uh, to, to create, to support the local uh, farmers, for example, of this producer of soap, uh, really goes beyond, you know, the, uh, what usually companies tend to do. So congratulations, really. It was very, very inspiring to listen to you. Of course, I have some questions. And a couple of them are more about uh, if you could expand a little bit on what you were telling us. Uh, so just to start with one, um, 
I, I was really impressed about what you say uh, on this uh, project about the organic lamb. Uh, and um, and I was really very curious how the guests then reacted to the new menu. And you were telling us uh, most of the guests were coming from Germany. Usually uh, they prefer pork than lamb. Um, so how did they react? And are you took care that the reaction could be positive? Can you tell us a little bit on that? Thank you so much, Elena, for your words and for the question. Um, I'm happy to hear that so that everyone gets uh, inspired from, from these ideas. And because we are sure that together we can do more things so everyone can do something. And um, about all these changes in the menu, at the beginning it was difficult. So we were tasting things. So, of course... Uh, when you start with doing something new, you have to test uh, if something works, this doesn't work, okay, let's do a different dish or let's uh, use it for another thing. So the first year was a bit of testing and check the reaction of the clients. But after that, uh, the clients are very happy because we sign very good at the buffet what means organic so the information that we are giving to them is very important so every um a dish that it, it has um organic or local ingredients it has a special sign also there are some information about that so they can understand uh, what it means. We have some special deco uh, about our local traditions and they can connect. Also, we were making uh, campaigns to share all this info. We were making a small videos with the um, organic lamb producers. We were in the farm. We were um, recording with them some special videos then to show the uh, show these videos in the hotels so they can understand what they are seeing and trying to um share all this information and nowadays they really appreciate all this uh the organic corners that we have in the hotels are very famous so people really like to have this option to enjoy organic uh food they really appreciate it. Yeah, the, 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 the importance of communicating is that it's being open and transparent and not bring the people along uh, the process. And I guess it could also be interesting to, to have them visit maybe the farms uh, also as a, an activity, a tourist activity. But uh, that's for something, for an, another, another, another moment. I guess I have a second question. I will be back, uh, give back to Lucia. I have more, but I don't wish to monopolize the conversation with you, Erica. Uh, so I was also very impressed about the compost um, story that you share with us. Also because I have a vegetable garden here and I know the importance of compost and organic compost. Um, but I, I, I suppose that, I mean, it's, it's, it's excellent the idea to, to make compost of your food waste. But I am sure that you also have a food waste uh, reduction program. Uh, because, of course, food should not become waste uh, and should not become compost. That is, good to do but it's not the best so i'm very curious about uh what you have done um to reduce uh, food waste also considering that you are working a lot with buffet if i understand it well so if you can expand a little bit on that please uh, erica of course elena so our main uh issue is not to make a uh, compost so one of our goals uh, is to reduce 20% uh, in the next three years the amount of organic waste per se that we are producing. So obviously it's not uh, the activity. So we are doing compost because it was a need from the sector and we were having this food waste anyways. Um, and we are taking advantage of uh, this um, waste, so we are not treating it as waste, it's a, a new resource, but it's not the point, of course. So we have um, goals in terms of reducing food waste, and last year we were doing uh, two pilot tests in our hotels with uh, artificial intelligence, trying to uh, reduce food waste. Um, all our hotels, they have uh, buffets, that's true. So that implies to be very caring, very aware of all the food that it's on the buffet once the service finish. And we are, are monitoring with um, some digital um, 
uh, tools that they use these uh, artificial intelligence uh, to see what we are throwing away. Um, so how kilos, uh, the, um, the category. So for example, this week we have been throwing away this amount of bread or this amount of uh, meat, uh, which days, which day I am uh, throwing away the most, why, uh, what we can do. And also we are trying to cross this information with the information of our clients that are located in our hotels. So trying to uh, see how in the future, we can see what uh, the clients like the most, what we should reduce. So also depending on the season of the moment of the season, we have different profiles of clients. And maybe at the beginning, we have a kind of client that preferred certain kind of food. And you can uh, then in high season, uh, it's not necessary to, to expose the same amount or also uh, the weather. The weather also has a lot to do with food. So if it's quite hot outside, people tend to eat less and also more fresh things. Also, we take this information in account and we are uh, working with a Spanish uh, company, one from Canadian, Canarian Island, to develop how to cross all this information together and have this info to reduce food waste. Of course, our uh, chefs and all the uh, employees that we have in the kitchen, they have every year a special training about food waste and how important it is to manage uh, the reposition during the service, uh, the amounts, the quantities, uh, how much they should produce or which kind of um, plates to use in terms to uh, make uh, small portions or individual portions. And uh, this is what we are doing now. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much, Erika. I'll give it back to Lucia. Maybe there are some questions from the audience. We had also a question. Uh -huh. I have one more, so no problem. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, Alina. Yeah, I think exactly well. Well, we have a question from the from the audience, from the participants. So, Eric, I turn it to you, and it's from Matthias Fuchs, uh, that is a member of this special interest group and a colleague who supported it. So, is uh, I read his comment. They said this your case. I mean, Garden Hotel is a wonderful example of regional development through tourism. Um, and so, the question is: Did you experience any rejection from banks or stakeholder? that were interested in growth and or exporting their own products. So, I mean, so in uh, rejection, that's where, in, in, so to say, not, well, yeah, interested in growth and export more than keeping, so to say, circular and local. Um, so this, I think this is overall the question. So I don't know if I understand correctly the question, but in terms of providers, if we have uh, some, yeah, if, if from the, I mean, maybe you had investors or you have stakeholder member of, I mean, I don't know, stakeholders uh, within your hotel chain that, I don't know, um, where, so to say, would have preferred a pro-growth oriented approach. I mean, so maybe, I mean, if they were suppliers, I mean, instead of giving their products to you, they were maybe more interested in, in selling it abroad or they found it. So I think the question is about if you found any challenge or I don't know to say problems in your own network of suppliers and stakeholders or maybe investors when you decided to embrace this circular approach and to stay, remain focused mm -hmm. on the... Yes, now I understand. I think this is exactly Thank if you. I interpret um, well the question from Matthias. Of course, it's challenging uh, because there are obviously some... Uh, uh, actors of the sector uh, of the sector that they are very comfy and they prefer to stay uh, working as usual um, but we are very commitment and we try always to convince uh, them but what we do is that we have developed uh, internally so almost 10 years ago our own um, buying or purchasing a platform uh, and we are trying to make this platform uh, a circular purchasing platform. What means is that we are taking in account all these aspects that are uh, important or val valuable for us also in the purchasing process. And we are um, 
making our providers part of it. So every year we make an evaluation of our providers. We send them a, a questionnaire, sustainability questionnaire, where we ask them um, how, uh, if they have any environmental certification, what they are doing in terms of waste, in terms of water, in terms of energy. So uh, what, how commitment they are. Also, we make them part of our um, social responsibility uh, policy and uh, we ask them after this uh, evaluation, they get uh, a puntuation and we know uh, which clients, sorry, which providers are um, in the same way as us and which of them are more far away. So with that ones that are more far away, we contact and we say, okay, uh, we are working this way uh, and you are not doing nothing right now. How we can help you to start doing something? If you want to continue working with us, you have to start doing something. We will help you, but let's do it. And we give them like one year and we try to help them. So how we can do something together, and after that, we make an evaluation again. With the ones that we already are uh, very close, we continue working with them and priorizing them. So this uh, allows us to have a quite uh, net of providers uh, close to our, to our values. Yeah. Thank you for, for your reply, and I'm sure that Matthias is listening. So, Matthias, if you have further question or any other of you exactly from the from the audience, please let us know. Um, otherwise, exactly, I, I don't know, if, Erica, if there is anything that you want to add, or I, I will have a question from my side, and I'm sure Elena, my colleague, too. So, <laughs> well, we are... For example, just to um, illustrate what I was talking about, the providers. Mm -hmm. um, uh common things that maybe we don't think about um the our animation uh entertainment program uh we have um some products that we sell no and most of them they were coming in individual uh so um, plastic uh yeah so they come e every product with one plastic bag and we were talking with the providers uh, and, and we say, okay, uh, we don't want you to sell to supply us this product like that. Please uh, remove uh, these individual plastic bags. We, we want to only one big plastic bag with all the products together. And they say, no, because, because uh, of uh, hygienic reasons, we should have one plastic bag each. We said, Okay, there are no problems with that, no worries. We assume whatever uh, with the hygienic reasons, uh, but it's not a problem for us. It's not a problem for the client. We don't want these individual plastic bags. So now, after all these uh, uh, conversations, they change in the fabric and they are not selling anymore the products in individual bags. They come in a big carton bag and one plastic bag all together no individual ones so these are the kind of things that we are trying to do with suppliers just yes, for you to have an example there are a lot of more in terms of plastic um but this maybe can you Im uh, imagine how we can do this kind of work with them yeah Thanks. Uh, yeah, exactly the, the examples always help to make it tangible and real it seems I guess um, no, so thank you for sharing also this other uh, story or example. Um, I have a question, and exactly, please, if someone else wants to get the floor, let me know. Otherwise, it will go. Seems well, you are now a successful story, and you share with us really inspiring story. And you also touches on a number of, let's say, aspects that you have to deal with. So legal constraints, or I mean, a relationship with a supplier, and also so to say, building a shared vision also. Um, to me is also, I see also a question in the chat, but I go with this question first and then I will go to the one in the chat. My question is, 
which were overall the main challenge? I mean, if you have to advise or consult another maybe hotel chain or hospitality company that would like to, to, to embrace this type of transition, what, what was for you the biggest challenge? Seems like I also pray, find very interesting that you are basically getting on board all the staff members at different levels, but uh, maybe it's the legal one, is the supply chain, is the internal training. I don't know exactly, floor to you and in your experience for sure. In the whole experience of uh, all these projects and all these process since we beginning till now that yes, now we can say this is quite successful, but at the beginning this was hard. The big issue is uh, beliefs, I would say. It's something, it's the common thing that, yeah, we have always do it like that. And you have to convince there are other ways, better ways to do it. Or, oh, this is going to be more expensive. Yeah, but let's check maybe in a long-term vision. Uh, also, we can use these to make a good position uh, in terms of marketing, in terms of image. So maybe it could be more expensive now, but then we are going to have some more works for that. We are going to receive uh, big impacts in terms of image. Um, at the end is uh, attitude, the big problem, is uh, the beliefs we have. Because it's not necessary to do it all and to do it perfect. Maybe you cannot buy the whole buffet organic. We are not buying the whole buffet organic. But we can buy a, a small amount of organic, a considered amount, and we decided to buy it. Although uh, maybe um, next year we cannot buy so much, but we are going to continue buying, although it's going to be less. Or maybe next year we can buy a bit more. But we are not stop buying. Uh, it's not necessary to do it all perfect or all or nothing. We can just try. And maybe you try this year and it doesn't work. Okay, let's try again another thing. I think the big issue are beliefs. And I'm sure that we can... Um, uh, <laughs> crash so uh that uh resistance for sure we can do it i would say we should do it <laughs> thank you Erica. i i agree i think i've been reading that we there is a crisis of imagination of when we want to change paradigm and i think this i mean what you're saying I, I totally agree with with your point so thank you for for sharing that and um i will go to the question here in the chat from alfonso vargas sanchez thank you alfonso for your question and You've been also the one who put us in contact with the Garden Hotel. So thank you also for that. Uh, the question is that, that in Mallorca, there was a pilot project named Circular Hotels, where Garden, where Garden Hotel participated together with our hotel chains in the island. How good this experience was for you? Yeah, this experience was the beginning of the composting project. Yeah, and it was uh, very enrichable, but also... Um, we were the sector was not ready i think at that moment because um it was so many actors in in there but we have no so clear how we do it i mean it's very important the transparency the data sharing so um, work with um cooperation and the the experience was um very uh, enrichable we were leading this project but then we decided to leave it and we were doing our composting plant uh in our own because um, we were uh, worried about the transparency of the project and the data and how we were sharing all the information and how we were cooperating with the other hotels. We think it, this is very important to be very clear, very open and to have the whole uh, process so not just to the beginning of the end it's important to have all the information and to be sure that all these have a very positive impact so it was very enrichable to get in contact with other hotels to lead uh, a project in terms of circularity 
But at that moment, at nowadays, we are not part anymore of the project. I know that also in Canarian Island, they are developing uh, projects similar, and we have been there. Uh, also, we were inviting in, in one conference, in a forum to share our experience, and we are helping uh, also others. And we are collaborating with competitors here in Mallorca uh, in terms to help them to manage their own organic waste because they are in some towns where uh, the public administration, the mun municipality is not uh, collecting uh, separately the organic waste. And we are, we are helping other hotels to uh, manage their organic waste separately in our composting plant. So we are very happy to share all this knowledge and all these efforts in, in a positive uh, impact for the local community. Thank you very much for your answer. Um, and I guess this is exactly replied to the question from Alfonso in the chat. Um, I think, well, we, we promised to keep this webinar in around one hour, and I, I think we are reaching there. But um, if there is another question, uh, we, I guess exactly also speaking on behalf of Erika, we will be happy to take it. I don't know if the question comes from the audience or maybe from my colleague Elena or exactly. I think we can take another question and then heading toward the conclusion of this first very promising webinar aiming to bridge theory to practice. <laughs> I think from no no question from the chat. So maybe Elena, you said that you had a question, no? Exactly. So give the floor a question to you. from the chat first. But uh, if there is no question, no, no. May, exactly. may I ask so, a last question, uh, please, uh, Erika? Uh, that's that's uh, like that's connected to the plastic um, project you were sharing with us. And again, a compliment that you you know kept insisting there, and also in previous projects, also the compost one, you know, to change law and regulation. Something I guess all of us were trying to implement circularity in hospitality settings, uh, find this barrier. But back to the plastic, I, I was curious about something because you were saying that after all this effort and, you know, and helping this company to help you actually, um, you are now able to reuse the, the plastic bottle f f four or five to seven times, if I remember well. Um, I'm very curious what, happen what happens after that. Uh, what happens after the seven So they have to be discarded? Uh, can this be upcycled, recycled? Uh, mm -hmm. What's the end of the bottle? Yeah, the end of the bottle is that it is recycled, of course. But uh, uh, before to be recycled, we use it as many times as possible. So that's the point. So nowadays in most of the hotels where you go in the world, they have already big dispensers. So we had before um single use ones that they were like uh, 30 milliliters and now 10 of those uh, are one big of thir 300 milliliters it's what we have common hotels nowadays the point is that usually after one use once they are empty they are throw it away obviously i assume to be recycled in the so separated in the correspond uh container but we were very uh, sure that we don't want to do that. So we want to try to uh, reuse this plastic as many times as possible. And that's why we create this circular uh, process. And we once they are empty, they keep it in the hotel. And once they have a big amount, the company uh, come to take them and they clean them in the laboratory, they refill them again, and they come back to the hotel. And we estimate around five and seven times we can be using, I mean, refilling the same dispenser. So that means that, uh, and after that, of course, uh, it's recycled in the correspondent container. But we are avoiding more plastic than not only change small for big. Because this uh, week we are using more once and again and again. That's excellent, I guess, because indeed those containers can be reused uh, a couple of times at least. Uh, you, were, um, you were inviting us eh, to think along. Uh, we are doing a process at this a project at this moment with a company who is trying to look whether they can actually upcycle 
uh, end of life plastic uh, on their own premises. So let's stay in contact. Maybe something new is going to happen also in between the Netherlands and uh, uh, the Mallorca, you know, in terms of this uh, collaboration in uh, bringing secret economy forward. Lucia, back to you, I guess, to close the conversation, unless there is some question from yeah. the I think okay. it's not, I don't know what, what to think, Karen. I also ask you to, to Eric. I think we are heading to our conclusion. I mean, since uh, I think that was really nice format. I mean, uh, also time wise. Um, so for sure, if there is any question or comment from the chat, from the audience, happy to receive it. Uh, otherwise, I think we can heading to our conclusion. Uh, first of all, with a big thank you to you, Erica. As, I mean, from the first contact was has been totally a pleasure um having you in this webinar getting to know your work your uh, garden hotels exactly all the commitment and energy that you, you're putting there in in this transition and the certification and honestly as elena was saying for us it would be really nice to 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 remain in contact seems well as you know we're working on circular economy transition also here in the netherlands with a number of uh entrepreneurs and this is also for the audience. I mean, we, we hope to keep on this discussion in our webinar, special, um, special interest group meetings, newsletter. So, I mean, this is, so to say, was meant to be as an inspiring <laughs> beginning to share uh, ideas, best practice, and also constraints, seems to be honest, exactly. I mean, we know that to reach success, we have to go through a number of challenges and difficulties. So, hearing also that side of this uh, would, would be interesting. So exactly. Then a big thank you to Atlas for hosting, to Leontine, uh, to Cornet, um, Tara for uh, helping us in organizing this webinar. And I think exactly. Thank you, everyone. I don't know, Elena, you want to add anything? Are you okay? Okay, Erica, anything from your side you want to add something? Thank or? you so much also for all this opportunity. Of course, I would be pleased to be in contact with you and to continue working, sharing uh, all this knowledge. And of course, maybe to do uh, new projects together, why not? Uh, yes. We are very open and uh, yeah, big thank you. And I hope to to see you soon, maybe in Mallorca. <laughs> if you love. decided to come to visit us, please let us know. It would be a pleasure to show you uh, all these uh, projects that, that I have been explaining here in in the territory. And um, I hope this inspire people to change some ideas. So a small also can do big things. And thank you so much. Thank you, Erika. We, we 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 all agree, and we hope we will have the chance to see in person, either in Mallorca or in the Netherlands, exactly. Um, yeah, and this is, I mean, for the participants. I think this was has been shared at the beginning, but as you know, this video will be available. I mean, for for all of you, um, and it will be on the YouTube channel of Atlas, and it, the link will also be shared um, via the newsletter that we have for this special interest group. And then, for any question, please feel free to reach out myself and Elena via email and then we keep in touch. Thank you again to everybody. Wishing you a nice weekend.